Right guys, Vol here, now onto game five. Finally, it's an army other than Space Marines. Uh, it's Phil's Imperial Guardsmen. I guess it's still the, the Imperium after all, but uh, at least a bit of a break. And really glad to be playing Phil. He's a great guy and a really awesome army. If you guys didn't catch the... Um, the uh, introduction video, well of course you, you may not have because I warned you about spoilers, but um, if you go back to that video after the uh, the battle reports and go check, take a look, I've got some good close-ups of his army, it just looks really cool. Um, the army itself in terms of the list is uh, sort of 50-50 vehicles and infantry, which is quite powerful, you get a lot of opportunities to do the orders and things. He's got the Calidus Assassin in there and the Battle Psychers and an Exterminator tank, or um, no, an Executioner tank, it's that that's the one that um, has the, the, the plasma cannon shots. So um, with that in mind, I have uh, deployed my vehicles uh, largely behind this hill, well the weaker ones anyway, the, uh, the land radar can hack it so it's going up the front. And uh, generally just uh, going to be moving forward as, as, as quick as I can uh, towards these three objectives. Now let me say uh, a few things about the scenario. Again, it's a three uh, objective scenario, as you can see from the white circles in the center. One of them is just above, just under, below the uh, terrain on the right-hand side there. And uh, you've got to capture the objectives to win. There are no other special scenarios uh, involving the troops and other things you've got to do. However, um, the objectives only become objectives when you kill units. So if you kill a unit closest to that objective, it dies and its soul is sucked away into the objective location itself and uh, is tallied up and the more units that you kill, um, the greater the soul power um, is for that objective and the more points you get for capturing at the end of the game. So let's see what goes on next. Here's another uh, image of uh, Phil's army. He's got the Rough Riders uh, right at the back ready to counter charge once I, I come in at him. And he's got his heavy weapon teams largely to the left hand side. Uh, Phil set up second, uh, I believe. So he gets the opportunity to sort of put his uh, more vulnerable stuff away from me. And well, the, the stuff he wants to shoot the most away from me as well. Uh, next image shows you more of a close up. He's got two Sentinels here which have heavy flamers. And uh, they're in with the uh, the Rough Riders there basically just to get some, some counter attack output there with with lots of, uh, lots of pain at short range that is and he's got a chimera with the vets with the melter guns there and same with the exterminator right next to them next image i move out first um, everything moves 12 inches forward and pop smokes basically no shooting there from them the obliterators uh, attempt to take down uh, tanks or whatever they can with their last cannons uh, but don't succeed and the defiler moving up onto the hill and blasting away with its battle cannon. I believe the first target I took with the battle cannon was um, some heavy weapon teams and a nearby squad, but I didn't really manage to pick much off there. He was able to get some um, cover saves or whatever it was. No, not, not so much cover saves. I think it was just the fact that I was firing through one of his squads at another squad, so he claimed cover. Can't remember quite what happened there, so you'll have to bear with me, guys. Sometimes, um, although I sort of miscommentate on things, we did play the game correctly, so not to worry too much about that. But the Demon Prince just hanging behind the Land Raider where he can get at least a bit of a, an, uh, an obscure sort of cover save there. Next image, uh, Phil is sitting and shooting, essentially. He's moved up his Exterminator tank. And um, hope that I hope I'm getting the names right, guys. If I'm not, you know, I'll just go back and look up the Imperial Guard book. But um, doing pretty well here to avoid the most of the shooting. In his turn, his uh, luck with rolling to hit, with orders, with armor penetration, with rolling on the vehicle's damage shots, and my cover saves was generally really, really good and uh, was able to avoid any serious damage. One critical thing I'll mention uh, before I go to the next photo is that I went to ground with my obliterators and this was uh, an intriguing sort of tactical decision. Of course it meant that I couldn't fire with the obliterators in the next turn but it did mean that he was um, putting more and more shooting onto the obliterators than everything else and the way I saw it, the obliterators were going to do very little this game because you know picking off a vehicle every couple of turns wasn't going to make a big difference but with the objectives and stopping his troops from capturing them and getting mine into the right position was, was everything. So if I could take the attention away from my runners and so forth, that would be great. And if I went to ground and survived for a couple of last cannon shots, he'd have to do that the next turn. So I was really quite happy with the way that decision turned out. And with my luck, managed to keep, keep passing my, my, uh, my invulnerable sort of cover saves, even though he got the, um, got the order off on them, which forced me to re-roll the cover saves in the first place. So very lucky. Next image, it's my turn too. And everything just moving full steam ahead straight towards 
the uh, the Imperial Guard lines, the uh, the Defiler moving further forward as well and firing its battle cannon at the Rough Riders, deciding not to run and flee to the stage because I wanted to lay down a bit of covering fire and I didn't really need the Defiler to be that far towards the their lines anyway. I, I actually expect the Defiler to die straight away so I wanted to get a couple of shots off before it did. Uh, again, next uh, next uh, image shows you what I'm doing with the obliterators, just lying one of them down to remind myself that they've gone to ground. But um, as you can see here, guys, um, heavy plasma gun, heavy, heavy pl plasma cannon shots aren't going to do a lot to the infantry. There's got there's just too many of them. With less cannons, maybe I'd be lucky enough to pop a, a chimera, but again, it's not going to kill the troops inside, and he's not going to be using the chimeras all that much because he can just walk forward to wherever he needs to. It's just, like so close to his lines. Um, so really, I felt like it was better off. He was he was getting a bit greedy, shooting all the last cannon shots at them instead of the rhinos, knowing that he would insta kill them and break through their their two plus armor save. But with the three plus cover save, I was able to survive that. So really happy that I decided to do that in the end. Next image. Here's where it starts to get dirty. Uh, in his second or third turn, can't remember what it was. He pops in with the Calidus assassin from reserve. And uh, during that same term, what he does is he uses the battle psychers to drop the demon's leadership by about seven or eight or whatever it was. And then he shot out with the, um, the Calidus Assassin weapon, the flame weapon, which uh, is a template weapon there. And it uh, basically uses your leadership when it rolls to wound. And my dastardly opponent pointed out to me that because the weapon was double my model's leadership after the modifier had come into place, he would insta-kill me, which I thought was really rude. Um, but he's a cool guy, and if he's allowed to do it, he's allowed to do it. But then, of course, I counter-remarked that my Demon Prince had Eternal Warrior, which kind of shut him down really good and meant the Demon Prince only took a single wound from the Calidus Assassin. So it kind of serves him right for, for that sting tactic. Next image, um, he pours out of uh, out of his lines here with some Imperial Guard squads. What he's trying to do here is um, surround the uh, the land raider in such a way that if he gets stuff on either side of it, um, and with the other one with the, uh, the the chimera in front of it, if he can block off all escape routes and wrecks the uh, land raider instead of blowing it up, it'll mean that the troops can't disembark within two inches properly and will be removed from the battlefield. So yet another sort of fairly underhanded tactic, but of course it's in the spirit of the game. You're allowed to do that. I accept that but uh, fortunate for me he didn't get that result when he um, tried shooting at the at the land raider itself next image just rumbling forward with his exterminator trying to block off the other hatch here as well and exterminator doing some more shooting but not able to get anything done the exterminator uh, fortunately for me has uh I keep calling it exterminator. It's an executioner tank. Thank you. <laughs> executioner tank uh, not doing a lot of damage this game, fortunately for me. A lot has the potential to after it gets some, some juicy targets in terms of infantry. Next image, the uh, as, as predicted, the Land Rider has popped wide open, but it explodes rather than being wrecked. So those Terminators are shafted, and they are, they are standing in the crater site. You know, we've just got to imagine there's a crater there. And uh, the shots came from within the Chimera vehicle, shooting out of it with their melter guns after moving, as I should have done in the first game, as some of you guys have pointed out, and as I as I actually realized even before I did the battle report. Demon Prince has been reduced to three wounds, but in the remaining turns worth of shooting, he fires all of his last cannons on order cannons and crap at it and kills the demon prince so that puts me in a spot of bother really i was um hoping to strike back actually no that's not what happened sorry take it back um just rewind a second there uh, what actually happens is the calidus assassin assaults the demon prince takes the last wound off it after uh, the shooting with it down to one wound and the demon prince struck back getting a few wounds but the calidus assassin saved them all luckily with its four plus invulnerable so that was really annoying losing the demon prince like that um, was at least hoping to take down the assassin at the, in the process exciting stuff now next photo what you see here is um, some clever play by me I felt. Um, I disembarked with the Berserker squad, which was in a rhino nearby, moved through the cover in such a way that the uh, Skull Champion with Power Fist was, uh, was closest to the Executioner tank, and the rest of the Berserker squad was lined up so that it would, could also touch the Calidus Assassin, allowing me to um, assault two different targets and spread them in a little daisy chain, allowing me to pop the Exterminator with the Strength 9 um, Power Fist to the rear armor and, you know, have all the, the rest of the Berserker attacks onto the assassin itself which in, ended up working mind you the terminator is doing the same sort of trick the chain fist going straight into the chimera and the terminator lord going into the nearby imperial guard squad making easy work of them 
Next image, um, I've got one rhino worth of marines moving directly to the enemy lines without disembarking, and the other squad does disembark and moves forward for an assault. The reason I've chosen to do this is that um, the squad that's attacking straight away causes such a nuisance that uh, most of the stuff in his lines will be will be geared up to attack that, where I can keep the other squad in the rhino to allow me uh, a countering a counterattacking opportunity in the next turn, uh, depending on what he does with his position, or alternatively just to run backwards to the objectives and 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 leave that squad intact, leaving him under pressure with the rest of the squad. So I felt I I played this reasonably well. Maybe you guys could spot better things I could have done, but I felt this was really going to work quite well. Next image, the other sneaky thing I've done here is just to uh, move my guys in during the assault in such a way that the first squad uh, was contacted by as many guys as possible, leaving just one of my models with no free guys to contact and allowed him to go forward and assault this other platoon command squad in behind with the grenade launchers, effectively drawing both groups of guys into the combat. And of course, me winning by a landslide and uh, breaking the morale of both uh, troop squads and having them both flee off the board, uh, leaving me out in the open with less guys to deal with, so I was quite happy with the way that turned out. Next image shows you the combats going on here. Uh, luckily, I wrecked both tanks with a chain fist and power fist, killed the Akalatus assassin, and murdered the infantry squad as well. So um, quite happy with the way that sort of central uh, little push turned out. Next image again shows the aftermath of the left-hand flank. I've got a group of guys just lined out as much as possible because I know that's going to flame me in the next turn. He may decide to counterattack with his Rough Riders here or he might go through the middle against the Berserkers with the Rough Riders. We'll um, have to see, but there's also the, uh, the Battle Psycho squad in that Chimera to deal with too. Next image, what he does do is he charges in with his Rough Riders at the Berserkers. Very fortunately for me, earlier in the game, I picked them off with a battle cannon and he got no cover against it and I managed to kill four or five of them. So when he comes in here, um, he does a lot of damage to the Berserkers, but generally his rolling was very low and the Berserkers managed to, um, you know, bash the crap out of them. He sent his an Inquisitor as well, but the Berserkers, just being so awesome, managed to take out the <laughs> Inquisitor squad, um, you know, just, just straight there and then. Next image again, the Defiler finally deciding to fleet its way through the lines into contact with the Sentinel now and uh, gives that one the bash. So quite happy that the Defiler is finally having some fun. Next image, um, again, uh, after it's dealt with the Sentinel, it goes straight in for the Chimera too. So really starting to pick up pace with this guy and uh, those battle psychers have been annoying all game. So time that I engage them in close combat and just smash the crap out of them. And you can see the, the detail on the, the Doom Throne guy riding it in this photo because I quite, really, really quite like that. Next image, um, just the rest of these photos are of the Defiler. After I wiped out the, the Chimera with the uh, Battle Psychers in it, I moved over again to take out the last cannons. They've been shooting at me non-stop all game, so, and the Basilisk too, without much success in hitting. So now is revenge time. Um, after taking so much shots against the Defiler, he's, time, he's, he's now in a position to reap some havoc. But you may be wondering how the rest of the game's going. So next photo, you see all three uh, Chaos Rhinos intact. Two of them have retreated to the objective. And the Berserkers uh, luckily have survived combat not long enough to move back into that Rhino. And so many units have died in this half of the board that um, all of the tallied uh, points have gone on to these two objectives. And luckily for me... Um, none of the, the points have gone on to the third objective on his side of the field, on the, on the right-hand flank for Chaos. And I really pin this, this massive, massive victory down to the, the fact that he deployed his army out in a complete line because he was short of space, whereas I hugged one side of the battlefield, meaning that all the kills from either side went onto those two objectives, and I could just ignore the third one and just take those two at the end of the game, which is exactly what happened, giving me a massive win. So going into the final game on very high standings, if I can win the last game as well, it should be should actually give me a decent placing. Um, you might notice the Terminator Lord against combat with the Sentinel there. I can only throw one cracker and hit him a turn because the Terminator Lord has lightning claws and not a power fist as the model shows but hope you guys like this report i had a lot of fun this game and um, looking forward to going to the last game uh, with my head held high so um, stay tuned guys that'll be up shortly